Yeah, hey, Courtney, good to see you. Um, what, uh, what have things been like for you just working with the receivers, obviously changing the, the position group that you're working with this year? Yeah, it, it's been good. Uh, you know, I think I had a pretty good idea what, what to expect as far as the mentality. Um, but I feel like that, uh, you know, from the, the brand new guys, which we got three, uh, three true guys that should be high school seniors still here, um, and then some of the older guys doing a great job leading those young guys about how we kind of uh, approach things and go about, about things. So it's been good. I, I've, I've enjoyed it to this point. Who is really standing out to you there right now? Well, I've been really happy with Keenan Garber. Um, has has come to work every single day, um, has made plays for us, um, has even shown, uh, even though he's a, a lighter guy, that, that he's not afraid to try to throw it in there and block some. Um, so, so I've been really happy with him. Um, obviously, a Malik and a, and, a, and a Brooks know so much about what our offense now, after being here for, for two seasons, that they've been easy to coach and they've done a good job trying to help some of the younger guys. Um, so in general, I, I've, been, I've been happy with them. As far as Malik goes, I know he's battled a lot of injuries throughout his career here at K-State. Are, are there things you can do in the offseason with his body, adding more muscle that, that can help make him a more durable player? And have you seen some of that? Yeah, you know, what that, one of the things for me isn't so much um, uh, myself changing things for him. It's him understanding that the offseason is so important for his development for, for game week, meaning – that if he'll listen to the strength and conditioning staff, if he'll listen to our nutrition people, if he'll do the things um, before we ever get to game day, he's going to be that much better. And to this point, I, I feel like he's been doing that. He hasn't missed a, a one rep so far in spring ball. And if, if he can keep working the way he's working, we'll be in good shape. Appreciate it, Courtney. Thanks. You bet. Kellis? Hey, Courtney, when, when you think back to last season, why, why is it do you think that the receivers, just as a unit, were, were not very productive? They didn't have big numbers. Yeah, you know, um, I, don't, I don't know that I ever go back specifically at why was this guy or why was that guy not as productive as we hoped he would be. Some of that goes to just looking at how often were they able to practice, how often were they put in a position to make plays, uh, more so than you know, overall why, why were they not as productive as a group. You, you try to look at individuals and see – how do we get them where when opportunity comes, they make more plays? Um, but uh, the thing that I think some folks miss is that it's, it's the entire offense. Um, I'll go back and, and just as an example, I, I hate to talk about that game, but I go back and talk and look at an Arkansas State, and we had a number of opportunities to make plays on a post, um, more than one. We had like three post opportunities that could have been game-changing plays. Um, a couple of those – um, we actually had somebody in the quarterback space, even though he was, you know, one was a naked as an example where the quarterback half rolls and then is throwing the deep post and a defensive end played down and then played back into Skyler's face. And he didn't maybe affect the hit on Skyler, but he probably affected the throw a little bit. And, and what I'm getting at is it's more than just the one individual receiver. Um, it's the old line. It's the quarterback. It's the wideouts getting open. Um, all of us as a, as a group, putting ourselves in a position to make a play, and that makes us look way more productive. Understood. Um, for you personally, is there a unit on the offense you enjoy coaching more than any other? Were you happy to coach receivers more than, say, tight ends or something? Um, you know, I'm kind of a, a, a unique situation for me. Over the years, because I've coached at basically every level of college football, um, some places where you've got obviously a full set of 10 assistants and other places where maybe you only have, you know, five or six full-time guys. I've coached, with the exception of the offensive line, I've coached all the skill positions on offense. And uh, a lot of places I've been, actually, I had to coach the wideouts and the tight ends at the same time or the quarterbacks and the tight ends at the same time. And um, so which one's the, 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 my favorite or do I like the, the most? Um, honestly, I, I, I've always felt like coaching a position other than quarterback allowed me to see what was going on more, more as an example. When I was with the tight ends, you had more opportunity to see what was truly going on with the old line. When you're coaching the wide receivers, you have more of an opportunity to see what's really happening with the quarterback and the receivers because they got to work so closely together to have success. So um, from my standpoint, I, I've liked all four positions when I've coached it. Um, the wideout positions where I actually started at my very first job from a, in a coaching in the coaching profession was the wide receivers. 
Um, and I've coached them at Iowa State. I coached them at Southern Miss. I've obviously now kind of coached them here, coached them at Missouri State. Um, so I feel comfortable with the wideout position. And, and I feel like we've got guys that, that are, are going to make plays for us when, when next fall rolls around. I also wanted to run, uh, run two players by you, see what you were thought about their progress. Um, Daniel Imator Bebe, I hope, I hope I'm nailing that right. What's he given you a tight end so far? You know, uh, uh, for only weighing, uh, I think he only weighs 240, 245, something like that. He plays a lot bigger than that. He's long. He's got long arms. He's got long legs. Um, when he comes off the ball, his ability to block people is probably better than what I anticipated. Um, but because of that length, because of those long arms, his catch radius, he's done a really nice job of be, being a big passing threat for us from the tight end position. So uh, very happy with him, um, happy with his knowledge. But, you know, but part of the thing that I think people don't realize is when you've been in college football as long as he has and been in as many systems as he has been, he really understands the game well. Now it's just getting the terminology and the verbiage down that we use. And how has Joe Urban slid back into the offense? Does it look like he took a year off, or is he uh, playing um, well? I, You know, I would tell you the first um, winter conditioning part, um, it looked like he'd taken a year off. And probably the first two or three practices before we got pads on, probably the first two practices before we got pads on, you felt like, oh, I don't know. I don't know where he's at. But once we got pads on, and now it's running, uh, handing the ball where people have to tackle him. Um, he's done a phenomenal job of doing what he, what we saw him do as a, as a true freshman. Some of the games where he got in where you handed it to him and you felt like he had great pad level and was playing fast through the holes. Um, so we've been really, really uh, happy with how he's, how he's progressed this spring. All right. Thanks, Courtney. Good to see you again. Good seeing you. Let's go back to John. Yeah, Courtney, I know Skyler um, obviously isn't able to be a full go here, but just what, what is he able to do right now and how much of a lift has it been to, to have him? Um, yeah, pretty much anything that's passing game where he doesn't have opportunity to get hit. Uh, so as an example, uh, we do some some uh, seven on seven type of stuff, but we actually have the D line going. If the D line are going, he's not in there. If we're doing that drill and he's going to take the rep, Coach, Coach Kleinman will say, hey, D line, you guys are dead this rep. Um, just because we want him to have the ability to, to interact and play um, and do the passing game aspect. But, but obviously, we're smart, and we got to follow what, what our, our athletic trainers talk to us about. And, and he's not at all uh, supposed to be in a contact position yet. Um, but his ability to throw the football, uh, I've been very, very uh, impressed with how he's rehabbed and how, and how they've done a nice job getting him ready to throw the ball down the field. Um, I was more concerned probably that – um, would he be, feel comfortable if he was on the right hash throwing a seam ball or even throwing a ball clear out to the left sideline? And he's been able to do it without, without thinking about it, and, and I'm, in, I'm impressed with where he's at with his rehab. As far as that backup quarterback job goes right now, who has stood out to you behind Skyler at this point? Um, you know, the, kind of, it's amazing because it was only a month or so of, of lifting and conditioning, but the growth of Will Howard – not just from a, a mentally, because you would expect him to be farther ahead mentally because of the number of reps he had to take last year in the season. But I'm talking his physical development, his confidence with his strength. Uh, his, you know, he ran the ball and had two of the longest runs we had last year. But I think everyone would say, uh, when you watch those runs, boy, he's running out of gas. He's, he's, he's starting to get where, uh-oh, they're going to track him down. And I'm not telling you that he won't get tracked down now. Um, but I'm going to tell you, he'll run much more confident than he did a year ago. Um, on a third down call uh, in our practices, so he's been very, very confident. And when he pulls the ball out, that, that he's strong. He, he's, he's able to play with that, uh, much more confidence. And I really believe that's from the, the four weeks of winter conditioning where um, he eliminated some body fat, put on a bunch of body uh, a muscle, um, and, and gained muscle weight, basically. So I'm, I'm very happy with how he's played. What have you seen so far from Jake Rubley and how he's been able to pick things up? Uh, live arm, really, really, really live arm. Um, and that's what we anticipated he would have. Uh, very cerebral as far as taking the time to, to draw every play out, going through every script. Uh, but as every, quote, high school senior um, to be freshman is, 
um, the game goes fast. Our defense does a good job disguising things. Our defense does a good job of, of showing one picture and then actually playing something else. And um, so from that standpoint, uh, Jake's got to keep coming along from a mental standpoint when the bullets are flying. But from a mental standpoint, before the play starts, he's very sharp. Thanks, Courtney. Appreciate it. Yeah. Grant. Hey, Coach. Um, I was going to ask you, what about Jacardi, right? How has he done in spring practice? So um, been happy to this point. And I know it sounds like, boy, you're happy about everybody. But, you know, he's a little bit bigger than what he had been. He's 230 pounds. Um, is showing up on special teams. Uh, you know, say, well, I'm talking about the running back position. Yep. Uh, there's no doubt. But the more confidence you can get, the more things you can start having success at, the more you're going to have success at that, quote, main position. And he's showing up that he wants to get better, wants to be a guy that people can count on. And you're seeing it just in even our special teams work that we do. Um, and when you start seeing some of that, you start feeling more and more comfortable that hand him the ball and, you, and you're going to believe in him. And, and I think the biggest part is him believing in himself um, because at 230 pounds, he still runs well. Um, and, and, you know, I, I want to see us have success, but I want to see him have success. So uh, I've been happy to this point. And then what do you think about the depth at, at offensive line right now that you have? Oh, night and day from where it was uh, when we started two-a-days uh, or fall camp last year. And the biggest reason is because those young men got forced into playing. Um, and, and some of them, uh, they, you know, yes, they had some reps maybe, but, but very few had had a lot of reps. And, and the example I'll use is a Cooper BB right now is so much more comfortable talking, communicating, executing his job, and then coming back to a huddle and being able to, to talk to Coach Riley and say, no, they were playing this, they were playing that, this, the linebacker played there. Um, and Cooper's just one example, but there's a whole bunch of young men that got forced to play that had not played much football. And a lot of people forget we didn't have any spring practice a year ago. So um, the, the growth and mental side of it that we're seeing out of those guys has really been, been good. Um, now they've got to get back to where they're also being the most dominant physically that they can be because we, we still want to be a knock you off the ball offense. And, and for that to happen, our offensive line has to play well, not just uh, as individuals, but as a whole, uh, understanding gap schemes and understanding zone and, and how do we get push and knock off. Last thing I'm curious about, you talked about Will Howard, Jake Rubley, and Skyler. What about Jaron Lewis? What has he done so far? Um, Jaron's been getting a lot of reps, uh, been getting a lot of reps with the, the one group. Um, you know, I've been happy with his arm talent, been happy with uh, his starting to understand our offense that much better. Um, he ends up getting lost a little bit, which he shouldn't, but he gets lost a little bit because of, you know, Will getting so many reps last year and, and kind of putting himself in front of Jaron. Um, not at all disappointed in Jaron, happy with his progression. And, and he needs to keep coming along, though. He needs to not just be the leader in the huddle like he, because he's always been that, where he steps into the huddle. He's a confident young man in the huddle. But he's also now got to take it to the field and, and make the plays that he can make. And, and what I'm getting at is um, I don't need to see him make that spectacular throw on a post or a spectacular throw on a, on a deep out route. I need to see him make a, a common throw, a, a quick out or a, or a hitch where, where he throws it in there and gives guys opportunity to go make plays after they catch it. Thank you, Coach. You bet. Let's go back to Kellis. After missing spring ball last year, do you use this experience to, I don't know, how do you use it? Do you put in any new stuff? Do you go back to the fundamentals? How are you approaching everything? Um, you know, we, we've tried to actually go through and, and truly install the offense uh, uh, basically a third time. You know, you, you know we had a, a spring and then a fall, and then you'd say well, we had another fall. Well, we didn't have spring ball, and our fall was so uh, somewhat dysfunctional because of offensive linemen or receivers or quarterback missing a, a 10 days with a, a COVID situation or a close contact situation. So we're really trying to do two things. That's put the offense in, and, and we're pretty much there now through, through the number of practices that we've had, but then also really hammer on the fundamentals. You know, if it's the old line working footwork, if it's the tight ends, uh, understanding what their aiming points should be, um, if it's the wide receivers, just the top of the route. How, how do you run the top of the route the way we want it run? Um, so we're, we're, we're trying to do two things, teach the scheme, but also hammer on the fundamentals and the details. All right. Thanks, Courtney. You bet.
Fitz. Oops. There we go. Hey, Coach. Um, hey. I'm going to ask you the question. Any young guys that have kind of stepped up and really caught your attention? Um, no. Well, uh, two wide receivers have done a really nice job to this point. Ty Bowman and, and uh, Jalen Travis. Uh, that are I would consider those, even though they've been in our program now, uh, I, you know, they're they're still young guys to me. I've uh, been really happy with them. Um, every single day, Deuce does things where you say, "Wow," um, and, and but that's kind of expected. Um, offensive line wise and, and tight end wise, uh, I would say tight end. Uh, a young man named Ben Sennett has really stuck out to this point. We've been happy with him. Um, and then from from an offensive line standpoint, Carver Willis who, you know, we, we forced him into playing some last year. Uh, we feel really comfortable with what he's doing. Um, he's a long, athletic young man that, that's, you know, not quite to 300 pounds yet, but, but he's not 265, 270. Um, he's, he's probably 285. Uh, really happy with him. Um, so every position's got somebody that we feel like, okay, they're showing the signs of things that we knew they could do when we recruited them. Um, but, but I'd say the guys I mentioned probably have stuck out the most to this point. That receiver spot, now that you're in charge of it, you, you get back some really nice pieces. Um, but you, you really need more depth, more competition. They need to kind of fear that they might lose some time, don't they? Oh, 100%. The, the, you know, the more we can keep going where we've got five, six, seven guys that legitimately can get on the field and, and produce for us, the more that the, each individual knows – Every day I got to get better. Every day I need to improve, even if it's only a little bit, but I need to improve. And, um, you know, the competition uh, to me is vital for us getting where we want to go. And that's because the more we can not just teach each other, but also push each other, the better it will be. And when I say it that way is I don't care if Phillip's the starter or if Malik's the starter or uh, Chebastian's the starter, they can't be afraid of the competition but they also can't be afraid to try to help the guy that's below them uh, be ready to play and to be ready to truly compete to take their job. And if they're ready to take their job because they're better than they are, hopefully that forces those guys to push themselves and to keep improving and just be better competitors. The same topic now with the offensive line. I'd imagine Noah's pretty safe, but uh, yeah. nobody really seems to be safe in that line. You've got so many players that some guys that started might be losing their jobs. Yeah, I would tell you that uh, uh, just as an example, um, Taylor Poitier getting opportunity to play the last couple games of the year and how well he played um, instantly put competition on the board for us from an O-line standpoint. Um, and now when you start looking at KT and you start looking and saying, well, Carver Willis did a, is doing a nice job and Cooper Beebe's doing a nice job and you got Josh Rivas and, and you're starting to roll through and, and all of a sudden you go, boy, I'll be honest with you, one of the guys I trust as much as anyone is, is Duffy. And it's because he comes to work every single day. And again, he was one of those guys in the four week time frame that we had that was quote winter conditioning, changed his, his body makeup unbelievably. And you know, Scott Troush does a great job using what they call a DEXA scan, where they're basically finding out exactly their body makeup. And four weeks later, took another scan and found out how much muscle they gained, how much fat they lost, where they put the muscle on, where they lost the fat. And, and Duffy did a phenomenal job and, and is having a really, really good spring. So the competition there has been really good for us. And have you messed with any guys maybe – seeing time in other spots right now, trying to see if they might find more playing time at a different position? Um, from, from the offensive standpoint, not so much. I mean, we, we've uh, obviously we're always trying to find out if our tailbacks, because we feel pretty good about the number of tailbacks we have, how much we can put them in the, uh, in the as an example, we would call it a two tailback uh, two tailbacks on the field at the same time, yet line up in a three wide receiver set. Um, and the more we can try to do that, the, the easy example is against Oklahoma, all of a sudden putting uh, Mosey out there as a wide out, the widest wide out, and having him run a go route um, and, and make a huge play for us. Can we put him in other positions where he can go catch a ball on maybe a bubble screen and not get tackled with the first guy that tries to tackle him and get us a 30-yard play? Um, and obviously, we did that some with Deuce, but are there some other uh, running backs that we can put at receiver and not to take away from receiver reps, but to make people defend um, different different personnel sets. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. You bet. Last one here, Kellis. 
All right, one last one for you. Um, given that you guys seem to have more quarterback depth than you have had recently, especially with what you said about Will, um, does that make you think about creating ways to get multiple guys out there next season? Uh, definitely makes me think that uh, we, we, we need to figure out if we can have a, quote, wildcat package, even though it maybe wouldn't be a guy that you would say can't throw the ball. Example, uh, you know, Will uh, obviously did a nice job running the football last year for us. Um, he's a bigger body dude um, that, that throws it uh, uh, well enough. But yet I really don't want Skyler getting hit that many times. You know, obviously Skyler understands on third down and understands in the red zone that, that um, it's, all, it's all on the table then. He, he's going to get hit because we need him to score touchdowns for us and we need, need him to run through um, linebackers and, and defensive ends and that type of stuff. But um, if we're out in the regular field and, and it's a third and two and we all of a sudden want to have that extra ball carrier being a quarterback, um, I think I'll feel comfortable putting Will in or, or whoever that next guy might be so that Skyler doesn't have to take some of those hits.